Well, joining me now is Jackie Goddard, Times correspondent and close friend of Hamish Harding, the British billionaire aboard the Titanic submersible. Uh, good evening uh, to you. Uh, Hamish, no stranger to adventure, though. He, he dove to the Challenger Deep in 2021, travelled to space aboard Blue Origin last year. Uh, a thrill seeker uh, is what I've been reading. Yes, indeed. And to clarify, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say I'm a close friend. Um, we're uh, long acquaintances over a few years of me reporting on him and, um, and friendly. And he is the nicest of people. Yes, he is an adventurer. Uh, he is a world traveller. He's somebody who, um, yes, he has the money to enjoy exploring his planet and, and, um, and taking these extreme adventure trips. Um, he does have a a hunger for uh, for just pushing the boundaries and pushing the extremes, and um, it, it seems sort of fearless at it. He's certainly, be, you know, lived lived life large um, over in the last few years. I first met him in 2019 when he was doing a circumnavigation of the globe, uh, a record-breaking um, flight uh, that uh, circled the globe over the North and South Poles. Uh, and since then, I've, I've known him as nothing but the ultimate uh, explorer. In fact, a, a, a friend, a mutual friend, uh, described him to me a short while ago as a quintessential British explorer. Yes, and I think when you say a quintessential British explorer, I was, would you include a sense of humour in that? He's a sense of humour. He's a very humble man. Uh, he's not boastful. He's not egotistical. Um, uh, he's an, a, a very accomplished um, guy in his own right as an aviator, um, runs his own private aviation company. Um, he's, he's jolly. He's um, humble. He's very endearing character. Um, he's not one of these thrusty types. And certainly on these missions, I know when he went down to Challenger Deep, which is the deepest point in the world's oceans in the Mariana Trench in, um, in the Pacific uh, last year with, with another mutual acquaintance, Victor Vescovo, um, a, a very accomplished submariner. Uh, it, he, was, he was just sort of had almost this boyish excitement about what he had done. Uh, and then when he went to uh, space, um, it, he was just so proud of that record that he had set of going to the the, the bottom of the world mm. under the sea and having gone to the top of the world or beyond. Um, he had that real kind of nice little little boy uh, thrill about it all. What assets do you think he'd have brought to the crew aboard the submersible? Um, and I've spoken to a few friends about this and one just now who was saying that calmness under pressure. Um, Terry Wirtz, who was a NASA astronaut and a former commander of the space station, was on that flight around the world with him. Uh, they set records together. And uh, Terry was just telling me about how uh, they did have some hairy moments on that. They were having uh, flying over the Antarctic um, and had a, a, a pretty challenging uh, moment or episode during the flight. And he said Hamish was just utterly professional, utterly calm, utterly stress-free, and whatever was going on inside him outwardly, he just did what needed to be done. He's also somebody that, even though he was a paying passenger on a mission like this, um, he brings something to it. He always wanted to contribute uh, and be more than just, you know, what people might call a, a space tourist or an ocean tourist. He wanted to be part of the crew and do something meaningful during an expedition. Yes, as you say, he's, a, he's, a, he's an explorer rather than a, a, a tourist, because the way that it first came out, it was as though it was five people with a lot of money uh, were tourists just going down to go and look at these sort of things. But, I mean, the point is that only do we advance by, by doing these things and doing them over and over again, as we know with the space race. Concerns, though, have been raised over the the safety regulations of this vessel and the trip last year that Hamish Harding was supposed to be on was cancelled because of a mechanical fault. I mean, had he known about any issues with the vessel, would he would he have changed his mind? Would, is he that sort of person? Well, and to, and, and to be clear, last year was not a mechanical fault. There was some damage when the, um, when the uh, submersible um, hit a, a surface buoy. Um, while it was moored up um, because it couldn't uh, dock with the, the mothership um, because of bad weather. So it was moored up to a buoy and it hit the buoy and because of some damage. Uh, so it wasn't a mechanical fault. Um, but yes, there are some inklings of concern um, being raised now as to whether shortcuts were taken in the operation of this sub, um, whether the um, folks operating it... Um, 
had fully completed all protocols and had had protocols and procedures and operational backup that they should have. That's a question I think we're going to see explored quite strongly in the coming days. One can bet that there's going to be investigations galore into this and um, and you know, day two of uh, of a story unfolding like this is when you start getting, uh, you know, whistleblowers and doubters and the people who yeah. um, can maybe bring some more of that insight into whether or not there were things that could have been avoided here. Certainly, one of them being the time that it took to inform the Coast Guard, which of course has been the authority that's been able to bring in a lot more powers that be, a lot of uh, naval and Coast Guard assets, and some of the best minds on the planet in terms. Of of um, ocean uh, underwater exploration. Um, yeah. It took about eight hours to report. It should have been about two. Jackie, thank you very much. That's Jackie Goddard.